Hello everyone, welcome to Augmentech. It's great to see you back. In this lecture, we'll learn about overall heat transmission coefficient. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Overall heat transfer coefficient, most commonly known as U value. U value is the rate at which heat transmits through a building component such as wall, roof, ceiling, partition, floor, etc. The higher value of U means heat can easily flow through the building component. And lower value of U means low heat transmittance. So if the component used in the construction of walls, ceiling, partition, has higher value of U, it means heat can easily penetrate into the system. And low value of U means heat won't be able to penetrate into the system. The units used to measure U value is BTU per hour square feet degree Fahrenheit. U value is the inverse of R value. Now what is R value? R value, most commonly known as thermal resistance, is the ability of a material to prevent the transfer of heat. So the higher value of R means the building components won't allow the heat to travel into the system easily. To find the total R value of building component, the individual resistance of these components are calculated and then added accordingly to get the final value. Then U value is found by simply taking the inverse of the R value. So as a whole, it can be summarized as the U value is one upon summation of all the R values. We'll do a sample problem to understand how to find the value of U when some information about the components used in the construction of wall is provided. So there's a simple question that says, determine the value of U for a cavity wall consisting of 4 inch face brick, 8 inch concrete block, 3 by 4 inch air space as the cavity, another layer of same type of concrete block, R17 insulation and half inch plasterboard. So some information regarding the components used in the construction of wall is provided. Based on these given information, we'll have to find the value of U with the help of charts and tables provided by ASHRAE. Before we start, Note that the right side of the wall is taken as outside the building and left side of the wall is assumed to be inside of the building. First, we'll find the R value of the outside air. We'll use the ashtray chart to do so. In this chart, this is the indoor conditions and this is the outdoor conditions. Because we are talking about the resistance of outside air, so this row of the chart will be taken. Accordingly, given conditions can be taken winter or summer. We are considering winter. And because we are talking about resistance, so this column is selected. These two intersect at the value of 0.17. So the resistance found for the outside air is 0.17. Now we find the resistance of 4 inch phase brick. Ashtray provides a chart for thermal properties of common building and insulating materials. In this chart, in the section of masonry materials, the row for brick is selected. In this row, the value of resistance is not mentioned. So the value of conductivity is taken. So the value found from the chart has to be anywhere between 8.4 and 10.2. So we'll select a suitable value Let's say we are selecting the value as 9 per inch. The value of conductivity we found from the chart is for 1 inch. So if the value of conductivity is 9, so the value of resistance would be 1 by 9, which is 0 
So for one inch wall, the value of resistance found is 0.11. But we know the wall that we are looking for is four inch. So we'll multiply this value by four and we get the answer as 0.44. So the four inch phase brick has the resistance of 0.44. Next, we find the resistance of 8 inch concrete block. Again, we use the same chart, but this time we'll follow the row for aggregate normal weight. On selecting the suitable row and the suitable column for resistance, the value can be taken anywhere between 1.11 and 0.97. So concrete block 8 inch has the resistance of 1.11. Then we find the resistance of 3 by 4 inch airspace cavity. This can be directly memorized. This value is very much close to 1 always. So for 8 spaces, the resistance can be chosen as 1. Again, we can use the same chart to get the value of resistance for another layer of same type of concrete block which is same as 8 inch concrete block so we use the same value as 1.11 then we find the resistance of R17 insulation because R17 is mentioned over here so it means something R17 simply means the resistance can be taken as 17 and then the resistance for half inch plasterboard again we use the same chart on selecting the row for gypsum or plasterboard and the column of conductivity because resistance is not mentioned. So we select the column for conductivity and we end up getting the value as 1.1. This is the value of conductivity for half inch plasterboard. So if the value of conductivity is 1.11 for 1 inch, so value of resistance would be 0.9 per inch so for half inch it will be simply half of it so we get the value of resistance for half inch plasterboard as 0.45 finally we have to find the value of resistance of the inside air and we make use of the same chart as we have used while calculating the value of resistance for outside air this time we select the section for indoor On selecting suitable row and column, the value of resistance is found to be 0.68. So the resistance of inside air film is found as 0.68. So these are the resistance of individual components used in the construction of wall. To get the value of total resistance, all these are added. And to get the value of U, the simple formula U equals to 1 by total resistance is used. On using the formula, the value of U is finally find as 0 0.0455. So this is how we determine the value of U for a wall. The value of resistance found for respective components are as for outside air 0 0.17. For 4 inch phase break wall, 0.44. For concrete block, 1.11. Air space, 1. Again, concrete block, 1.11. Insulation, 17. Plasterboard, 0.45. And finally, the resistance of inside air, 0.68. So, this is how the values of resistance are for the components used in the construction of wall. Now that we know how to calculate the overall value of heat transfer coefficient, this lecture is over. Thank you and see you again in the next one.